In a previous video, we looked at making a basket twist handle with just four round bars, and those lay in next to each other very nicely. They form a nice square, and it's pretty easy to keep them in place while you forge weld it. Today, I want to complicate things a little bit by adding a fifth bar, so they need to lay into a pentagonal shape, and they don't want to do that. They want to start to form a little bit of a pyramid, three on one side, two on the other side, and that really is not what we're after. To fix that, we need to insert a, another round bar in between the stack. But unfortunately, a quarter inch bar doesn't work, so you need to experiment, do a little trial and error, mocking this up before you go to forge welding. And I have found that a 3 16 bar is the right size bar to make this work out just right. Now, you don't want this 3 16 bar to run all the way through here, because then you're just going to have a rod running right in the middle of your basket twist, and that's not going to look good. So what you really want are little short pieces just at the ends where the forge welds are going to go so that there's nothing passing all the way through your basket twist. Now a weld like this goes much simpler if you weld it in a bottom swedge or a V block. So I've got one that just fits this. So I have a three quarter inch bottom swedge and that's just right for this stack of five bars. I also have a short piece of half inch square bar that I'm going to use to make a tool handle and we'll turn this into a fire poker when we're all done. You want to keep turning this in the fire to make sure that all five bars plus the core heat evenly to welding heat. With it good and hot, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of flux on there. I'm using Iron Mountain Flux. It doesn't really matter whatever your favorite flux is. Borax is fine. Now the flux has some iron filings in it, so you're going to get some sparks from the fire. But you don't want sparks coming off your material to be welded. It's a little bit too hot. If you have a good solid weld and there's enough heat left, go ahead and start scarfing it in the same heat. Then we want to put a similar scarf on the end of the half inch bar. I'll upset just a little bit of the end first. Again, a light rapid blows to set the weld. Before it cools off too much, you might as well go back to the fire and get it hot again. I need to blend all this into the half inch bar. This just gives me a handle so I can do the second weld without worrying about tongs. I'm going to go ahead and draw this out to a long skinny taper so I can put a little ring on the end of this. Another real popular treatment for the ends of these is to leave it stubby and put a collar around there, a forge welded collar that forms kind of a knob. And that's a real nice finishing touch. It's a real elegant way to do one of these. But I think we'll save that for a different video.
And of course you want to do most of this at welding heat. I'm going to go ahead and put a twist in this before I finish that. So I've got a nice section right there that I can grab with a twisting wrench. Try to get as even a heat on this as you can. And I'm going to go one full revolution. I'm going to finish drawing this out and hope that I've got just enough space there to get this wrench back on there because the next part of the twist is to untwist it a little. Although this looks good just the way it is, so you could leave it. I'm going to use the guillotine tool and fuller her in just a little bit here. square octagon round. Now I'll draw this out so it's all about the same size and that gives me a nice transition there. Remember, this is forge welded, so that very tip is six different pieces of material drawn out that small. So that's a good forge weld. sure it's straight. I think I've left enough square section here that I can still grab that with a twisting wrench and open this up maybe just a quarter turn. We'll see. So now we back twist it. Try to keep it straight as you untwist. So that's a quarter turn. And open up a lot further the more you untwist, but I really like that look. So I'm going to leave it there. Sometimes less is more. Now it's time to turn my attention to the rest of this fireplace poker. I'm going to draw the half inch shaft down, leaving it a half inch up here by the handle, and then getting smaller as we get down towards the poker end. So I'll probably start working from this side and then we'll let it cool, turn it around, I'll just hold on to the handle because that should be a comfortable place to hold on to it now and then draw out the rest of that. And I'll go ahead and do all that at the anvil just to show that you can do all this right at the anvil. This is a great time to thank our sponsor at Black Bear Forge, Combat Abrasives. If you use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10, you'll receive a discount on your next order. We're going to use the guillotine tool to isolate a mass at the very end of this that will be a very simple poker end, since the twist is really the point of the video. Notice how I'm working so the hammer is off the edge of the anvil 
If I work back here, I'm going to be striking the anvil with every blow. That's all I'm going to do for that point. Now I'm just going to blend this in so this thickness transitions to that thickness. Now as this cools, but it's still warm, I'll put a little bit of paste wax on there just to give it a nice finish. You could do a lot of other things with this. You can do any kind of a working end on this poker that you want to, but I want people's eye to be drawn to the basket twist. That's the thing that this is all about. I mean, that's what this video is all about as well. So I didn't want to do too much to the rest of this. I want it to be functional, useful, I want it to look good. But I want this to be the showpiece up here, so I didn't put any other twists in it. I didn't make a big fancy point. If you prefer that stuff, you can do any of that you want. Lots of options in all of this stuff. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We will see you for the next video.